Hello and welcome to today's web seminar, Five Crucial Steps for Planning a Successful ERP or EHR Rollout with special guest speaker Leslie Osborne from TechSoft Ventures. Before we begin, a little bit about the technology we'll be using today. All of your lines have been muted for the duration of the webinar, but you can enter any inquiries that you have anytime via the question box or chat box. We'll queue them up for a Q&A session at the conclusion of the presentation. You can also slide the GoToWebinar box closed by clicking the orange arrow or double arrow, but do not click the black X or you will exit the web seminar. Now I'd like to formally introduce our speaker. Leslie Osborne is a veteran education and OCM professional with over a decade of training experience. She offers extensive knowledge in software education and has delivered large-scale EHR education projects and SAP rollouts with training and utilization of ER third-party software like Manhattan Associates WMS. Without further ado, please welcome Leslie Osborne. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, John. Hey, everybody. Welcome. So uh, 2014 is out of the gate. And I'm going to guess that there are some software implementations being planned out there, right? Well, as a software education firm, we have been around many, many, many implementation projects, and we just have some insights that we would like to share with you to help your implementation be a bigger success than you're already on the road to be. We always believe that you should go for the W, right? W means go for the win. So somebody always has to be in charge of the calendar. We think it's very important to set the duration, manage it effectively. Second tip is that the slope of your scope does not need to be slippery. Determine it, lock it in. Don't let creep happen. Resource requirements are easy to do if you have number one and number two set in. You set number one and number two, your scope and your time, you're going to be able to determine how many people you need internally and externally from the very beginning. And I hope after this webinar that maybe some of you see OCM a little differently because it is obvious to us that in a lot of projects, the opportunity and impact of OCM is underestimated quite a bit. And finally, I think this last one should actually be the lead actor, but so many times it's underbilled, and that is the impact of strong, positive leadership on implementation rollout success. So let's talk about how we can go for that W. I want to encourage all of you to avoid this. If at any time during your implementation you feel like you are on this piece of playground equipment, we encourage you to drag your feet, stop the spinning, and get off. And then we encourage you to go back to point one and point two and determine what isn't quite right there. Point one and point two being scope and time. So it's important to set your project duration and manage to it effectively. Manage your calendar. Okay? Set those milestones in concrete. Put your integration testing and rebar in the ground. Put that training deployment in a nice class or a parrot so that it doesn't move. And that trial goal line that you're going to do, set it in a nice resonance, okay? Do not move. Many things in life have timelines that can be pushed, that shouldn't be pushed, and so you have to back into them, right? You need to play on these things so that you hit all those dates. Maybe you should think about your implementation as a wedding. 
you can't change the day of your wedding because you forgot to hire the organist, right? You have to go on. The show must go on. Or maybe you should think of your implementation as a new law that's going into effect. Maybe your state has actually uh, changed the speed limit on the interstate, okay? And that new speed limit is going to go into effect on this date. So even though the signs aren't up, people are going to start driving that fast. So maybe you think you need to think of your implementation that way. But you also need to think of it this way. Sometimes things do get pushed. And there are consequences to not meeting your deadlines, aren't there? Loan payments, I think we've all felt that thing. What about a project that you're supposed to do at work? You don't meet, meet the deadline. You probably don't get a good performance rating. And you may not get to head up the next project because you're not responsible enough, right? So ERP and EHR implementation timeline, they can be pushed. You're exactly right. But they have consequences. There's fear. And there's distrust that starts growing in the ranks. And this overall sense of, do we really have any idea what we're doing? And that's a hard one to overcome. So manage that calendar. If you say you're going to do something, make sure it gets done. Know what the boundaries are. And there's no creeping outside those boundaries. And by boundaries, we're talking about scope. And scope, as we all know, is defined as the extent of the subject matter that your implementation is going to cover. But I think the second part of the definition of scope is the extent of the subject matter that the implementation is not going to cover also. So many times when we are working uh, with project teams on projects, the scope is defined, but what we're not going to do is not defined. And so we have to keep asking, uh, is that really within the scope? Well, uh, well, it could be. If you decide what you are going to do and what you aren't going to do, creeping cannot happen. So get in control. Don't leave any department out of a discussion. I have been on projects where the project team is, of course, chosen, and the steering committee, of course, is chosen. And those are the people who are deciding uh, what's going to happen, what we're going to change in our company. And they're making the value impact statements, right? Well, what doesn't happen so many times is that there are other little silos and little departments out there that aren't involved in those conversations and who do end up being impacted. Case in point, working on an ERP project, and they had, a, we're installing a sales and distribution module, right? And so they had all these different kinds of sales order types and all of these different kinds of pricing, which every company does because you're all very different from each other. Go through the integration testing. Go through the user acceptance testing. Actually, go live. And about three days into go live, the repair department raises their hand and says, um, what are we doing? We weren't trained. We don't know what's going on. We don't have any idea. This little teeny tiny department was not thought of. They were impacted. And post go live, they had to be brought into the fold and trained and configuration had to be done. Don't leave anybody out of the scope impact discussion. Or you could look like this picture here. Obviously, a clear cut went on here. We needed some wood to build houses and buildings and schools. And they did a great job, right? Anybody see any impacts that maybe weren't looked at? Did anybody say, well, there's probably a lot of animal displacement going on there? Did anybody say, wow, that's a pretty steep slope. I bet those roads are going to be washed away sometime. 
And along with those roads washing away, that means the new seedlings cannot take hold. So probably they are going to have a 100% regrowth, right? When you're setting soap, just remember to ask lots and lots of questions and maybe include more people than you think you need to. Who are those resources and where do they come from? I bet you have all kinds of people within your company saying, pick me, pick me, pick me, I want to help. And once in a while, there's somebody that's over there to the right just covering up his eyes and saying, don't look at me. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I want you to know that if you determine a solid scope and a solid deadline, it's going to help you determine what you need for resources. And then you need to ask the hard questions. Who are you going to use? If you use those people from inside your organization because they know what's going on, they're your subject matter experts, right? You're SME. If you use them for the project, who's going to do their job while they're gone on the project? How much time are they actually going to spend on the project? And how much time are they going to spend doing their real job? And then who is going to manage that? Who's going to test configuration? Who is going to do integration testing? I mean, those things take lots of time, weeks at a time. Again, who's going to be running the business? Who's taking sales orders? Who's creating products? Who's running the financials? Who's going to communicate all of these changes to your company and make sure that everybody is up to date and informed and not running scared? Who's going to write your training? And who's going to deploy your training? Are these all inside people? Are these outside people? Are you sending the people out to get trained? Are you opening up a new department in your company? And then you have to think about the aftermath. Go live support and triage. And then there's post go live. I mean, two weeks, 30 days, 60 days. Education sustainment. Who's going to update all those different processes in your training? And how are you going to go ahead and train new hires? Because the whole idea around this implementation is that your company is going to grow and prosper. So you're going to be bringing on more people. How are they going to learn the system that you're working in now? Answering all those questions requires resources. Knowing how long you're going to work, what the scope of your work is going to be, will help you determine how much help you're going to need. Anticipate and plan. OCM, OCM, OCM. You've made changes before at your company. You know you have. And you have employees who have been through those changes with you before. So your company has what's called a change history. Maybe it's not well documented. But trust me, people remember. They remember how that change from one email platform to another, how that went down. They remember how that change from telephone systems, how that took place. So when it comes to making this big change, this big software change, talk to your people. Ask them, how have we handled change in the past? Were we any good at it? Get their feedback. Ask them how could we how could we be better? What do you need next time that we didn't provide in the past? And if those answers show you that you need some education as a company, or that you need some assistance, or some outside coaching, don't be afraid to go get those things. Because it's important to understand who is accountable in your organization for communicating change. 
if change management is not a part of your organization's culture, consider getting some coaching. And then developing a philosophy for your organization that you'll use all the time. Because so many times, change management is considered a work stream that's added on to an implementation project, when in fact, it should be part and parcel of an entire business plan because change is happening all the time. These are a couple of quotes pulled from a couple of different sites. One is from a blog and one is from a change management tutorial. The earlier business calls on its valuable resources to participate, the higher the, pro the probability of success with your change management. That's saying get involved fast. Don't get involved as a, oh, by the way, we should probably be talking to these people. It's kind of important to the success of this. And eventually, change management just became one more work stream instead of a new way of thinking about how to get something accomplished. So consider creating a philosophy around change management in your company. Anybody know what this quote and what this picture is from? Anybody say remember the Titans? Okay. I believe that this uh, quote is applicable to any situation where leadership is being affected. Attitude reflects the leadership. The attitude of your employees, of your associates, of your departments, is a total reflection of their leadership. So I ask you, how are battles and, and wars won? How are championships won? How do organizations grow and change and prosper? Because there are leaders out there on the battlefield, on the court, on the field, in the warehouse, in the offices, there are leaders who are respected, who are believable, and who are honest. And they're communicating, and they're helping, and they have a great attitude about where the company is going and what's going on. So some of you, as you're rolling out these implementations, you might actually have to say, maybe we need to challenge our leaders a little bit. You know, maybe we need to challenge our managers and supervisors. Challenge them to be the type of leader they would like to have themselves. Attitude reflects leadership. Now, I know that your ERP or your EHR is going to look just like this. I know that all of you have what it takes to make it go kapow. All right? But wouldn't it be awesome if your implementation looked more like this? Yeah! All cylinders are firing. It's all great. We've managed the time. We've managed the scope. We've had the right people in the right places at the right time. We're talking about stuff. There are no questions and no rocks unturned. And the leadership has been there the whole time. So we urge you to kick failure to the curb. And maybe take one of these two of these things that we have seen as software educators. We've seen these things over and over again. And we're just giving them to you, saying, hey, look at this. Know that time doesn't have to slip into the future and scope does not have to creep. Take the reins and hold on. Drive from the driver's seat, not from the back seat. Determine early who's going to do what. And find where are those people coming from. If you need to get some knowledge into your company that you don't currently have, grab some outsiders to come in and coach you and train you and take that knowledge from them and make it your own. I hope that with this implementation that you're going through this year, that you 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 
learn a little bit more about three little letters. OCM. It's not a work stream. It's a way of working. And finally, implementations can make or break leaders. And therefore, make or break your implementation success. Put those people again in the lead actor role. Don't underbill that. Get them out there in front of everybody. And good luck. Well, thank you very much, Leslie, for today's presentation. And before we enter the Q&A session, we do have a quick announcement that we'd share, uh, like to share with the audience today. If you are attending the HIMSS conference next month in Orlando, uh, please feel free to visit the TechSoft team and our speaker today, Leslie, at booth number 3509-3509. The first question we have is, Leslie, in your experience, what are some of the biggest causes of scope creep? The biggest causes uh, are, are, like I iterated earlier, is that um, everybody is not talked to within your company. Yes, you know you're going to implement uh, something in the warehouse, and you're going to implement the change in your sales and distribution, but you know, those, those different areas are touching other areas. They bump up against other places and other departments, and it's really important to go ahead and and determine what those are. Say you're implementing in an emergency department a um, new charting system for your nurses and providers. Well, guess what? That's going to affect registration and lab and radiology and transfers. So it's a matter of thinking beyond just what you're putting in and seeing where all those little tentacles of those areas reach out to. The next question we have is, is OCM better as an inter internal or external resource? Oh. I don't think uh, there's a difference. The difference lies in do you already have an OCM department, an OCM philosophy. If you already have one that you're using within your company, then you don't need an external resource. But if you don't, it's worthwhile to go out and get that outside of coaching. So if you need somebody to come in and help you for, for the implementation and help you develop this nice new culture and this nice new department or whatever within your company, bring them in, let them go. But if you already have it, certainly you don't need to bring in somebody from the outside, right? And a chat message just came in. Somebody said that they missed what OCM stands for. Could you repeat that? Organizational change management. And you're right, I didn't have it written down anywhere. I apologize for that. OCM, organizational change management. Which is sometimes shortened to change management. Perfect. Thanks, Leslie. Well, we are going to wrap up at this point today. Several people asked about the PowerPoint presentation. And if you would like a copy of today's presentation, please reach out to the TechSoft team. You can email or call Kathy Swank. Her contact information is on the screen. Once again, we thank you, Leslie, for your time today. We'd like to thank today's very large audience for attending. We'd also like to thank our sponsors, TechSoft Ventures. With that, we hope you all have a great day. Today's web seminar is now ending.